Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And today we're back with the proper Arman's Guide with several different options for how to build him. Because, yeah, there's some interesting decisions that need to be made along the way. Uh, sorry, this one is obviously a little bit late. Uh, I had to actually, you know, play with him a little bit. I ground out his masteries in Minotaur. It's taken a while. I wanted to wait for the five-star soul as well to come through. But hey, look, here we are. And uh, yeah, there's definitely some strong options. So, um, well, I mean, briefly looking at his kit, he is insane, of course. AoE that steals all the turn meter and stuns. Amazing. Single target sheep that can then buff strip the enemy and give him turn meter. His A1 can do a mini lockout and give him turn meter. His passive interacts with sheep through polymorph or through his A3, uh, which does again a mini lockout and fills his turn meter a bit. And then we've got a 28% arena speed aura. We've had quite a few champions now recently with it, like the upcoming fusion, AS Dread Dream Song, she has this, he has this, uh, Sun Wukong has it as well. This seems to be a new, very common aura. I certainly think that Armand's is kind of insanely strong. And I think it is a fairly, um, yeah, I, like I, I feel like recently they've been really pushing. And why, I mean, it's the question, why is Armand's so OP? I think they really want to bring the speed meta back in in a pretty big way. And champions like Armand's is how they're doing it, just making them really powerful. Let's talk about the blessing. So I think there are probably three main options for your blessing, but there's probably more than that as well, more niche stuff. So option number one, which I think is, um, you know, uh, just a good all round option is polymorph, right? So with Polymorph, especially with the five-star blessing, you have a 15% chance to put out sheep whenever he is uh, debuffed or has his buff stripped, which is pretty nice. Um, the Polymorph in particular, that does interact with his passive. So when they come out of sheep, it will increase their, one of their cooldowns and fill his turn meter. So you've got some nice synergy there. Because he is the aura lead, right? You want Polymorph high up in your team so that you can Polymorph champions early when they try to debuff and actually interrupts their skills and protects the back of your team from those debuffs or buff strips, etc. So Polymorph is a good solid option. Uh, another good solid option is your go first Armands. This is when you are very, very committed to a speed team and you're very committed to going first. Intimidating presence can be well worth it. Strengthen your aura, your speed aura, weaken their aura, their speed aura. Um, this is pretty much, I think, you know, it's not that strong of an effect, but again, with speed, it's binary. Whoever has more speed goes first, and if you go first, you might win. So yeah, if you're building a pure speed team, I think that Intimidating Presence is really good. Uh, so that's a great option. Uh, the other, I think, really good option, which is a bit more flexible, is Temporal Chains. This can actually work very well in um, a cut-in team. I'd say in particular, so that your Armands is going to be very fast, but you're looking to interrupt them. And there's a gear set that combos very well with this as well, I think. So this decreases enemy speed for every buff on them. I think in particular, uh, the six piece is pretty good as well, which will push their turn meter back. So that's a pretty big power spike for uh, temporal chains. Interestingly, like Polymorph, for instance, this gets irresistible sheep. That's very powerful for Obviously, a ton of champions. Not so much with Armands, because he has the accuracy anyway, whereas the Temporal Chains thing is pretty big. So I think Temporal Chains is a really good option as well, which is like, okay, they've buffed up. We push their speed back. That's great. Now we can potentially come interrupt, steal their turn meters, or we can buff strip them. I think that's a really good synergy. So those would be the three I'd be looking for. I think it's sort of up to you. Um, are you going for a go first team? Are you going for more of a go second team? Are you looking to cut in? Uh, and it depends on your build. Let's talk about build then. So <clears throat> there are a variety of options here. I think for pure speed Arman, so especially with uh, the, the, you know, we're, we're trying to go first. We're really banking on it. You've got very good speed gear. I think like full speed gear is a great way to go. Just have him crazy fast and guarantee he goes first. The downside of that is, of course, stone skin can mess with it. I think four piece stone skin is pretty highly recommended. So by building four piece stone skin, you're obviously going to be giving up some speed. You don't get any speed stats here, but that four piece of stone skin, it protects you from things like hegemon. It protects you initially, at least from the torment. It's going to protect you from uh, enemies that are faster than you as well. It won't protect you from lockout, but it protects you from, from nearly everything else. I think that is a very good option. 
Uh, it gives you more flexibility to move him into a go second or a cut in team. Um, I, I just think that four piece stone skin is probably the most solid way to go. And preferably you want to do it with accessories and then get speed with your other stats here. Um, I think I don't have enough good pieces in this set, but I think I think Saf is a big fan. I saw Saf building him in this. I think this is a really good option is four piece supersonic. And this goes with your cut in Armands. I think you could even build him quite a bit lower speed with this. Basically, with Supersonic, with four pieces, he gets a 2% turn meter for every buff on each enemy. So let's say a Sifi puts up three buffs on everyone. Um, that 6% turn meter fill per enemy. Four enemies, you know, you're getting 24% turn meter fill. That's a ton. So even if you build him slower, so let's say we put him in four piece supersonic, four piece stone skin, so he can't be debuffed at the start. Whenever they buff up, bam, he gets a bunch of turn meter. This, I think, set has a particularly strong synergy with the temporal chain. So look, they buff up, we're reducing their speed, we fill his turn meter, great, we can cut in. And then you've got the option of steal all their turn meter which you probably would do, right? Because they've buffed up, they've taken a turn, they probably outrun their one turn stone skins, most of them. So steal their turn meters and then strip the debuffs off and polymorph anyone that's left uh, that is still in stone skin. You can polymorph them, get rid of them and that strip off their buffs. It's a very strong way of playing Armand, so that's a good option. Generally speaking then, in terms of his stats, uh, he basically wants speed and accuracy. It's really that simple. Speed and accuracy, and then probably defensive stats after that. But uh, really, just put him in the gear that makes him as fast as possible uh, with as much accuracy as possible, and then consider the sets. Like, I wouldn't give up tons of speed and accuracy to get him in the ideal sets. Um, so it's sort of up to you. You could also run him in six-piece stone skin as well as, as sort of an option as well. I'm quite a fan of the four-piece because he tends to... Uh, I, I prefer opening with his A2 and then he gets his second turn really fast so the second turn of stone skin doesn't do much and the four piece stone skin is just a little bit of safety and you don't give up too many stats. For his masteries, I think something like this is what you're going to go for. Basically getting as much accuracy as possible. I did grab him Evil Eye, again focusing on his turn meter control because his A1 is quite strong. We've also given him Retribution and Deterrence, again because his A1 is quite strong. Uh, we gave him Wisdom of Battle to help him deal with the Torments a bit, um, and uh, Resurgent as well to potentially deal with that. Uh, fairly standard sort of stuff there. I think it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, we come into the arena. Uh, I, I, let me show you. So uh, I've been using him. I think this is a nice little team. I wish I had, wish I had a Duchess. I think this is a pretty nice uh, mix of a team. Um, Queen Eva. Could potentially be a problem i will have a, i've recorded it already i'm just trying to i'm going away for a couple of days uh, for a little holiday so i'm trying to schedule videos in advance there will be a queen eva showcase coming up soon which would be a pretty hard counter to this sun wukong because she can kill sun wukong past an ultimate death knight stay tuned for the queen eva showcase probably out tomorrow i think or the next day one of them um but yeah i think this little team could be good i'd say duchess would be ideal in here to kind of protect you with the veils and stuff like that. So this is a fairly accessible team. I mean, this is a very free-to-play team, which I found to be uh, fairly effective and strong. So let's dive in. Uh, we've got a bolster set on Mithrala, though stone skin would be really strong as well. We've got stone skin on Ultimate Death Knight. We've got the stone skin on Armands. Wukong is just there. And this is why he's so crazy. Like, bang, that's just kind of busted. <laughs> like, it's kind of broken, to be honest. Then we could even A1 her, push her turn meter back, decrease her cooldown. We can uh, put increased attack on us. He's done a block revive. So you know what? Let's actually steal that and bonk, and they are getting wrecked. Let's push her turn meter back, try increase her cooldowns. Uh, we can just A1 here, actually, and it doesn't, doesn't even matter at this point. We just like, slam them down and uh, we should have, should have done something else. It's fine. But bam, that team's taken down. So that's sort of him against a team that doesn't have stone skin. That's what happens. If you are faster and they don't have stone skin, what, what can they do? <laughs> you stole all their turn meter. You stunned them. They're just dead, right? They are just dead. Okay, if we put this in on full auto, again, the same sort of concept here. Uh, this team, again, like I said, because we don't have a Duchess who would bring the increased attack and protection for the Wukong, uh, we're using Mithrala instead. So we don't have um, 
or Vive and whatnot. He actually resisted. That's funny. So you can see on auto, I do have him using the Polymorph. That will slow you down, unfortunately. But bam, he's increased her, 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 her cooldowns. She actually funny had all of her cooldowns anyway. It's a little bit unlucky. But I mean, look at this. Armand, he's back in with the stun. Uh, he's actually sheeped her again, which is slightly unfortunate. But yeah, hopefully we would be locking her out of her moves uh, with her revives. Again, when she comes out of the polymorph, she can have her cooldowns increased and Armand's A1s. And wham bam, Armand's totally locks them down. Let's see him against a different type of team. Okay, here we go. A go second team. Let's see this. This should actually be a pretty rough fight. Um, I'd probably be avoiding this one because Harima is just... Ultimate Death Knight plus Harima is a huge pain for Sun Wukong. Let's give it a go anyway, and we'll see how it goes. In fact, let's do this one maybe on the manual. So you can see what we'd probably ideally do is, uh, well, we can do a few things. So number one, actually, look at this. They're not protected by stone skin and they're locked out. Like, that's just so disgusting. And then we can remove the Ultimate Death Knight. So Wukong can actually start doing some damage, which is going to be pretty nice. So let's see if we can kill the Harima. We did. Now they're going to take a lot more damage. We can try lock her out. No, we decreased her turn meter. Uh, he did get the revive off. It's a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, do they have any polymorph? They do have a little bit. I'd say we're fine with ultimate death knight. I doubt Harima has enough for his uh, accuracy to debuff us. I'm feeling quite confident. We'll buff up just to be protected. And like Armand's, he's back to his move already because of the turn meter. It's, it's so disgusting. It really is. Uh, at this point... Um, I mean, let's hit the Harima. Again, try kill her off. Smack this. Harima probably could polymorph <laughs> ultimate uh, Wukong, which would be bad. But yeah, I think we can uh, we can remove him again. Strip off his his poly, uh, his stuff. Great. One of the weaknesses here would obviously be polymorph, which is why we're running a lot of polymorph um, on our team. And one slight problem as well is, is he can keep sheeping, <laughs> which could be annoying. Here we go. We'll do his greatest hits. He actually killed her. Cool. All right, good. He woke up. Great. And um, we should be able to be careful here not to polymorph him again. That's also why we set his A2 to priority one. We don't want him to keep... It will slow you down a lot, potentially, on farming if they have... Uh, you know, you keep polymorphing him and he keeps surviving. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see. Um, is there anyone that looks really... F this one might be quite fast. This could be nasty. Got a six star. Okay, this could be a weakness. Six star polymorph is going to be a big weakness for our mans. This could this could be nasty here. He might be faster than us. Um, and he's got the lockout. So this would be where. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. We are faster. So we, I feel like we just win for free. Ah, he's actually. We haven't set up a preset for him properly. He's not doing his uh, a two. So that would be something you could force him to do with your presets, so that's worth noting. Let's see, can we get any other fight? Here's a C, here we go, okay, great. Um, so we could come in, we could force him to do this priority too. Depends if you're doing it on auto or, again, he could, he could slow your fight down a lot by just postponing things by polymorphing. So they should definitely be faster here, definitely. Let's see how it goes. Oh, ne never mind. We are fa What the? Wait, doesn't he have empowered champions and stuff? What the heck? Okay, well, we're faster, I guess. And, <laughs> all right, we just have almost killed them all. Thiefy, she's going to protect. He actually killed him off. We did so much damage. We destroyed nearly all of his HP. Okay, that's good. We. <laughs> oh, wow. We destroyed so much Taras HP. That's strange. Maybe this guy's doing a regear or something. Right, we steal the trim meter again, which is important. Polymorphed him. Seafy's dead. Like, it's just disgusting. I think this shows you most of it. I, I did try to record a showcase for him in Live Arena. In Live Arena, every fight he was first picked, nearly every fight, every fight he was banned. There was a couple of fights where I didn't ban him, but every other fight he was banned. That's it. Can we find anyone that's quite fat? I mean, this, this is sort of a, an interesting one. The Hegemon. Hegemon is a good counter to Armands if he does not have stone skin, right? Because Hegemon can smack the Armands before he gets a turn, right? So uh, his art, he goes first. He could potentially lock us out. Here, it's not actually going to happen. Sadly, he's going to polymorph the Arbiter, which is bad on auto because now, you know, it would have been better to polymorph the Ultimate Death Knight and then start killing them. 
But yeah, again, even his A1 is good, especially with that, you know, the Terminator pushback from the Mastery. I think it's just all good. Uh, he, and he really starts rotating through with his passive as well. Oh my god, it's he's so broken, guys. He is so strong. This is a must-build champion, there's no question. Uh, let's see, will Arbiter get... She gets a revive off. We've been slightly cursed with our lockout look. The Arbiter's getting revives off like crazy, but like, what can she even do? What can she even... <laughs> she's sheeped again. Like, it's gross. This sort of shows it all, but yeah, he is banned all the time in Live Arena, so it's not even worth showing. I thought this was a nice budget team, but like, you get the idea. He's gonna do this on like every single team, but I think you definitely do... Uh, run him for oh my this is the problem you run into is that he he will just keep spamming sheep and it will slow you down so you do have to watch out for that it doesn't really matter on arena defense you just set him up like this anyway and it's gonna work but yeah i've been trying out this team this team is working pretty well um i like the ultimate death knight for that little bit of protection makes it difficult to kill him and wukong in there i think that they are a good trio together very obnoxious nobody wants to deal with this um, the only downside, I think, with this team, particularly if you're earlier game, is you might struggle to uh, uh, fill up a bunch of defenses, right? You might you might be investing too much into this. Um, so what I've basically got at the moment are these these three teams. Um, so we've got the fast Armands, which is super annoying, with the ultimate Death Knight Wukong combo, Mithrala to protect them, keep them alive, up ultimate death uh, up wukong's damage got lots of buff strips so the petrify can be effective as well um we've got this team here which is the narciss and Korra, with increased defense protection champ and our cleanse and block debuffs champ and reviving that's a really solid team i actually did have ultimate death knight in this team before but i split them up because um yeah i found that i wanted narciss to counter teams with like Necret and then I wanted Ultimate Death Knight to counter teams like Rotus or Wukong and stuff and I couldn't it, it was too annoying having them both on the same team so I split them up and they're pretty good and then this is you know sort of the Seafy speed lockout team um this one loses the most we've had a few fights so we just lost all three there uh but like we've winning a good chunk team three definitely loses the most so that team definitely could do with some upgrades um Oh, we fought this guy three times. Okay, so he did beat me the last time. Uh, but yeah, you can see sort of his Armands. He's got Armands in with the CP and Lockout. That's a very strong combo as well. Although it did lose two out of the, out of the three. Um, anyone else using Armands? We've got Armands here in a, again, a speed team. He did lose. He must not have been fast enough. Um, and Armands could be locked out as well. But yeah, gives you a bit of a concept. People running Armands in speed team. Um, but again, it didn't didn't work for him here. Uh, we're only in, in goal three at the moment. So, you know, we're not in the toughest fights. But here, again, some defense to give you an idea as well. I think it's useful. Armand's in here with similar to what I had, you know, protection champ, damage, duchess, you know, again. So that's like the Mithrala ultimate death knight Wukong. Similar strategy there over here. Uh, similar sort of strategy. Him in with uh, Tormund and Sifi. So it's like we're going fast. Yeah, okay. Over here, can pure speed team with the Arbiter. That's just, we're going fast. That team would definitely struggle a bit against uh, stone skin stuff, I'd say. Um, again, he's in speed team here. We're going fast, locking you out. Uh, what else do we have? I, I feel like he doesn't need to be in a speed team. I feel like he by himself is a speed team. And that's the advantage. He can kind of go with anything. He himself sort of is a speed team. That's a fun one. I like that one. That's cool with the, the Lydia. And, and the Yumiko for the lockout. That's quite nasty. Uh, but yeah, look, there you go. Hopefully you picked up some ideas. Um, yeah, some concepts. Armands, he is a must build. He is a must use. He is, uh, for probably most of you, the strongest arena champion on your account right now. Probably. Like, he is that good. He is, I would say, easily, easily as strong as, you know, lockout. I mean, honestly, like, Lockout has the advantage it goes through Stone Skin. If Stone Skin didn't exist, Armands be infinitely stronger than Lockout. Like it's actually crazy. He is so once Star Stone Skin is gone, he is so strong. His biggest weakness is probably Polymorph. Um, yeah, probably Polymorph. Polymorph, Stone Skin, and then he can be locked out and does nothing as well. But there you go. That's Armands. Let me know. What do you think about him? How have you built him? Any tips? Um Hopefully we've covered everything there, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.